welcome again to The Breakfast. If you're just tuning in, well, we've missed a bit. We're still in time to get what is happening today in history, or rather, what happened today in history. Uh, we'll start with the shoe drawing, because I'm kind of intrigued uh, with that one. On this day in history, in 20, in 2008, uh, I think that's a better figure, an Iraqi broadcast journalist, that's um, Mudatha al-Zadi, throws his shoes at U.S. President George W. Bush during a press conference in Baghdad. Now, um, it's been six long years, as at the time, of um, the U.S. invading Iraq in search of weapons of mass destruction and then visiting the country for the last time before he left, left office. Uh, President George W. Bush joined the then uh, Iraqi Prime Minister, Nori al Maliki, for a news conference where he proceeded to argue that the prolonged conflict uh, had been necessary for world peace. Now, this journalist, Al Zadi, who was 28 years old at the time, um, stood up. And let me see if I can quote what he said. This is a gift from Iraqis. This is the farewell kiss, you dog. That's um, his um, shouting in Arabic at the time. And that's a picture of him doing uh, it uh, then. There's actually a video of the incident um, that's still trending um, many years down the line. He didn't stop there. After the first throwing, yeah. he threw the second one. And uh, he also talked about it being uh, for those orphans and widows who were killed in Iraq as a result of the war. Yeah. Uh, the, the interesting thing about this as well is uh, the president's reaction. Uh, some said that there was a quote sometime uh, later that said um, he took it well more than anybody expected. He just shrugged his sh shoulder, made a joke out of it. Um, I think he said something about um, it showing Size the, 10, yeah, think. there is a freedom of expression uh, for Iraqis to be able to do that. And then uh, the conversation uh, continued. Now, the other part of this, um, he, the guy became almost a cult hero. Size, king size shoe um, um, Replicas, mold oh, yeah, yes. was made. Um, we had cobblers fighting about who actually made the shoe. There was a tip. Um, uptick in the number of orders for that shoe um, at the time. And then uh, marriage offers were coming from back, <laughs> right, <laughs> left, and center. Um, the, we had one that said he will give um, a young bride to the man with plenty of gold um, at the time. So it trended. His work was um, amplified as at that uh, period. Uh, the simple action of throwing that shoe became a symbol of resistance, according to reports in the Middle East at the time. Now, amid all of the backlash from the government against the journalists, they went to his employers and say, we need you to apologize. What did the employer say? The employer said, no, we're not doing that. We're building him a four-bedroom apartment so he can rest after he comes um, out of he was, jail. Uh, he was sent to, sentenced to three years in jail and uh, eventually was released after nine months. Uh, then moved out of Iraq and uh, you know, returned a lot later, I think in 2018, to run for um, um, a seat in parliament, which he lost. Mm -hmm. um, the interesting yes. part, again, is... Um, he now became a recipient of his own action. His own action exactly. <laughs> it's, 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 it's an interesting story. And, and the um, underlying details you know, for you know, this, this story uh, from 2008 are truly about um, the, the reason behind him throwing a shoe. Um, and over time, it's, it's a conversation that a lot of uh, people have not been able to have um, or have not been able to actually own up to. And that was the fact that, the, you know, it seems like the United States actually lied about the idea of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. And that led to 
um, on the average, about 400 to 500,000 people dying in a war that was, you know, according to the rest of the world, entirely unnecessary. And so when George Bush was, of course, giving that speech, the journalist couldn't hold himself back from expressing his disgust. And if you listen to the words that he said, he said, this is a gift from Iraqis. It's a farewell kiss, you dog. He also said, this is from the widows, orphans, and those killed in Iraq. It's, it's um, really about the pain that a lot of people from that part of the world feel um, about the, the lives that they were born into and the lives that they've been able to live, you know, and the, the basically the lack of actual living that they've experienced, yeah, mostly well. because of politics and because of the U.S. invasion and because of maybe a personal issue between uh, George Bush and Saddam Hussein. Yeah, um, you know, w one thing that also comes to mind after reading the story was what would happen to a Nigerian who dares to do a thing like that? No, you, you would be somewhere in the DSS. Um, um, We're not talking a very, very three years time. punishment. It mm. could be longer. But who knows, with the evolution that we're seeing going across uh, the country, it might be different. Our president will take it uh, with humor, like uh, W. Bush did. Um, he was quoted as, uh, like I said earlier, uh, saying it showed that democracy is growing um, in Iraq, and he said we should not his that man's action should not be construed as uh, representing uh, that of the large Iraqi population, but it seemed to have been uh, the case. Yes, very much. All right. Also today in um, history in 1998, it's uh, basically the start of a almost you know new beginning for. Uh, Nigeria. It was on this day in 1998 that INEC registered three major political parties, the AD, the PDP, which eventually became, you know, it was rumored as one of the biggest political parties in Africa, and the APP. This happened in 1998. Ephraim Akbata was INEC chairman at that time. Um, it, it, it basically was, you know, in a period where Nigerians were groaning and crying for um, an end to military rule. They were looking forward to the start of a democratic rule, and these were the steps that needed to be taken then. If you remember also, a few months before this was done, there were um, political parties, there was five different political parties that were clamoring for uh, General Sania Bacha then to be the next president of Nigeria, democratically elected president of Nigeria. Um, then, of course, there was the talk of the one million man match for uh, General Sania Bacha. On, you know, fortunately for him, as life would have it, um, he didn't make it you know, that far. And immediately after his death, those five political parties were uh, destabilized. And then, of course, the AD, the uh, PDP and the APP sprung up. General Lucia Gombasanjo was, you know, released from prison and eventually became the uh, candidate of the PDP and won the elections in 1999. Um, but it basically was a start of it for a lot of Nigerians felt like it was the beginning of a a new era. You know, a, a huge part of our history that you know would change things forever. Yes, people are still maybe a little disappointed with our journey through democ democratic rule, but. Um, at least we started it, you know, some, somehow, some way. So, yes, on this day, 1998, AD, PDP, and APP were registered, are given full registration as political parties by INEC. All, all the while you were talking, what came to my head was the fact that of these three parties, the most uh, vibrant it seems remains the PDP, yes. um, and some of the, um, I think the... APP, uh, they evolved to become Africa, um, um, all Nigeria People's Party. Uh, they merged together to form the APC as, as we know it today, yes. and that was in 2013. Uh, what have, have these parties been able to do for us? That remains uh, to be seen. Uh, because we are constrained with time, we'll just talk about quickly uh, the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. We'll just give you a quick uh, brief on that. that. This happened in 2012 in Newtown, Connecticut, uh, the United States of America. 20-year-old Adam Lanza shot and killed 26 people, including 20 children between six and seven years. Um, they, he also shot six adult staff of the school. Um, earlier that day, before he went there, he had killed his mother at home. 
uh, first responders arrived at the school uh, too late. He had already committed a suicide after um, he finished with the evil action uh, that he set out to do. It has been described as the deadliest mass shooting at an elementary or high school in U.S. Yes, history. Right. We know that since then there have been uh, more shooting, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, uh, the debate about gun control comes up every time, yes. you know, uh, incidents like this happen. Um, there was an autopsy. Some people were saying, oh, maybe there's an explanation. He was mentally insane. But the, the autopsy did not show any tumor or any, you know, um, um, mental a health issue uh, that might have gone unnoticed. But his teacher uh, did say uh, that um, um, he exhibited antisocial behavior. He rarely interacted with other student and, uh, students rather, and was obsessed with writing about battles, destruction, and war. So I guess this is a trigger uh, yes. for everyone watching. If you have young children, I mean, your child, everybody believes your child is an angel. Your child is the best thing ever. But there are telltale signs of people, how they grow, how they progress, uh, you know. So if you see things that worry you, that makes you pause for a moment, don't say, I love this child. It's impossible. It's the child of my loins. So the child cannot do this kind of evil. Please take necessary step to, you know, change the mind of that child. It is still, uh, there's still time. Appreciate. It was uh, also the second time that, you know, I'd seen uh, President uh, Barack Obama cry on, uh, on TV mm -hmm. um, after, you know, this happened. And, uh, you know, a lot of people were very hopeful then that the gun laws would be um, um, put in place. In, in it's United still a mess States, but it's as still, it is. Yeah, even at that time, uh, you know, it was still defeated in the Senate uh, 60, 40, I believe. Um, Adam Lanza was 20 years old. Unfortunately, when you're talking about mental health um, illness, um, his mother, who maybe would have been able to give a clearer uh, picture of what was he was killed. dealing with, was also killed. So, And then um, all the guns that he used were actually legitimate. It was uh, bought by the mother. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you have your child have access to guns, you know. He wasn't a child anyway. Um, he was uh, 20 at the time. So he was... Um, the age of consent, as they say. Unfortunate, um, it's souls of these young ones that died continue to rest as angels in heaven. We'll wrap things up for today in history. The breakfast continues. On the flip side of this, we'll be talking about the spike in the cases of COVID-19 across the country. Top generals are going on isolation. Our own governor in Lagos State has tested positive and is receiving treatment. Kaduna State Governor has taken to second isolation. All of this we'll be talking about with Professor Tomori Oyeweli. Stay with us. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.